There were no major economic data reports scheduled yet as U.S. President Donald Trump is due to release what he describes as a massive tax plan later today. And talking about the numbers now, the Dow Jones Industrial Average rose 0.14 percent, while the S&P 500 declined 0.03 percent. The Nasdaq was seen higher by 0.03 percent. Let's go over now to Asia, where indexes traded higher across board following the rise in the U.S. indexes overnight on the back of strong earnings announcement and expectations for U.S. President Donald Trump's impending tax reforms. Japan's benchmark Nikkei 225 index saw at 1.1 percent to finish at 19,289.43, 19, while the Kospi registered gains of 0.5 percent to end Wednesday's session at 2,207.84. The ASX 200 rose 0.68% at 5,912, while markets in Greater China were higher, with the Hang Seng Index up by 0.58%. The Shanghai Composite climbed 0.2%, and the Shenzhen Composite rose 0.36%. Now let's take a break from those numbers now. And although Nigeria is the world's fourth largest cocoa producer, most of its cocoa is exported for processing abroad. Finished cocoa-based products like chocolates and sweets are almost always imported into the country. And Nigeria's oldest cocoa community is slowly trying to change that by producing handmade etioni chocolate, a brand of made or a brand which is made from cocoa obtained straight from their farms in the country. Adeze Kweme has been roasting cocoa all day in preparation for a new batch of chocolate bonbons. Kweme has a hotel order for chocolates that will be given out as complimentary welcome gifts for guests. After shelling the beans, a granite stone is used to manually grind the cocoa before being put into a machine to complete the grinding the process. It's very similar to the granite stone that we use. Although it's a long and often tedious one, it ensures that the beans are not too refined or over-processed and also helps retain an authentic cocoa flavor for her Etioni chocolate brand. Nigeria is still the world's fourth largest cocoa producer, even though it has dropped from producing over 200,000 tons a year when the sector was deregulated over three decades ago to processing less than 20,000 tons today, but most of the country's cocoa is exported. Ekweme, who has an MBA in international business, started making chocolates in 2016 after she saw a gap in the market for locally made chocolates. What I always say as well is that um, a lot of the things in the shops, they're not really chocolate. They're what I call, what even Americans call it candy. You know, so it's, if you look at the percentage of cocoa in it, it's, it's really, really small. It's been, you know, half of it is a biscuit, there are wafers, there's milk, there's sugar. But then in terms of pure chocolate, I don't think, we don't have anything of comparison in Nigeria. Anything being imported, is not this is one time that i would say that the nigerian product is of a more superior quality to whatever is being imported here by far she sources her cocoa beans from itioni a rural town in the ocean state in nigeria's southwest the town is set to be the first region where cocoa was ever grown in nigeria this plantation has trees that have been growing for about 120 years From there, the cocoa beans are brought back to Lagos, where they are sorted before processing. Ekwema says this is one of the few communities that manages value addition of cocoa from the plantation to the final product. Each chocolate bar sells for five U.S. dollars. We actually found out that we did have fine flavors, and we do have trees that are 120 years old, producing some of the best chocolates one could ever find in the world. And we've been sitting on that, and... We, we were just under the impression that, oh, people don't consume chocolate much in Africa. You know, they consume it in Europe, they consume it in the States, so you shouldn't be making chocolates here. 
Although the Etioni chocolates are yet to gain national recognition in Nigeria, the brand has slowly made its way into some of Lagos's top hotels as well as at duty free shops at the city's main international airport. A committee set up to review South Africa's tax system has launched a public debate on a possible wealth tax. The Davies Tax Committee announced it was inviting submissions from South Africans on whether the government should implement such a tax to reduce the glaring inequality in Africa's most industrialized economy. The team explains in a statement that the Minister of Finance specifically requested the committee to inquire if it would be appropriate to introduce additional forms of wealth taxation and the feasibility of doing so. Appointed by the former finance minister, Pravin Gordon, in 2013 and headed by Judge Dennis Davis, the Davis Tax Committee is tasked with assessing the role of the tax system in promoting growth, jobs, development and fiscal sustainability. The committee plans to meet next month to discuss submissions. Meanwhile, cabin crew at South African Airways have gone on strike over pay benefits, disrupting domestic flights and threatening to extend the walkout to international routes. The South African Cabin Crew Association said its nearly 1,400 in-flight workers were down tools indefinitely. The president of the union, Zazi Insibayoni, told reporters that the workers, who represent around 80% of the airline's cabin crew, had not received any pay increase for six years. South African Airways says the strike has already delayed flights out of Oar Tambo Airport in Johannesburg, which includes around 19 million passengers a year and would also affect flights from its coastal airports. The SAA, which is technically insolvent and reliant on government debt guarantees of almost 20 billion rand, has been singled out by rating agencies as a threat to the country's credit status. Business Incorporated will be back in a moment. Please stay with us.